There's something you should know about belief. Once upon a time, Muslims built the greatest architecture. They contributed massively to mathematical and scientific advancements, not to mention literature and the arts. We were the movie makers. We were the dreamers of dreams. Where did we all go wrong? The Holy Quran states, and whoever adopts unbelief instead of faith, he indeed has lost the right direction of the way. And that is what it all comes down to. Faith, belief. But what is faith? Why do we need to believe? King Chuing Huang, the first emperor of China, believed that he could build the Great Wall of China. So he built it. Napoleon Bonaparte believed that he could build the French Empire. So he conquered. And Mahatma Gandhi believed that he could liberate India from the British rule. So he liberated. You see, faith is that very thing which allows a human being to maximize his potential and actually do things. But alas, there are those who lose faith in their own God-given abilities to actually do things, and so they do nothing. An epidemic is sweeping the globe. Muslims everywhere just don't believe. Experts in the field are putting the root cause of the problem down to a lack of self-esteem. Scott Kiltman, our leading expert, reports. They've forgotten about the great days of Islam that Jabir ibn Hayyan, student of the Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, is considered to be the father of modern chemistry. We invented science for Jabir's sake, invented the methods to grind glass into lenses that were later used in Europe to invent the telescope. We also had working medicine while Europeans still told people to swallow cattle dung for the plague and drink ground up frog bones for gout. In the 10th century, a Muslim described and treated smallpox and also used alcohol as an antiseptic. And in the 11th century, a Muslim diagnosed and treated meningitis, and a Muslim discovered the camera obscura. Muslims built the first observatory as a scientific institution in the 13th century, and a Muslim explained the cause of a rainbow. We'll talk about Leonardo da Vinci and the Wright brothers and their designs for flight machines, but would you believe years before either of them, a Muslim, was the first inventor to attempt to fly in 810 AD. And what's the situation now? No. No. I'll tell you what now. Muslims are more concerned with having the latest iPhone than inventing it. You've forgotten. You've absolutely forgotten. You're so busy fighting for scraps off Longshank's table, you've forgotten your God-given right to something better. And now here's Ghost Girl with the weather. Rain. The Quran tells us, oh you who believe, believe. Muslims everywhere just aren't believing. And that doesn't mean that we're not doing hijab, because we are. We're praying salah, we're doing hajj, we're fasting, we're giving charity. But are we truly believing? Like with many things, there are levels of faith. There are the lower levels of faith, and then there are higher levels of faith. I believe I can fly. I have a dream. I believe we can find the cure for cancer. But even if we have faith in our own abilities to accomplish such things, we still need to have belief in a higher power that can guide and help us to accomplish them. So the question is, what's the highest thing someone can have faith in? 
the magnificent, the omnipotent, the all-powerful, the all-encompassing, the why, the originator, the sustainer, the creator, the unlimited. And to believe that he is, as the Quran states, closer to you than your jugular vein. A person who truly believes in Allah and knows how close he is to all of us will never ever 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 limit himself to what is less. Because he believes that there is something greater than just these worldly things. You want a car? Here you go. What now? You want a house? Oh, you want a, you want a bigger house? Here you go. What now? No, there's something more worth fighting for. There's something more worth attaining. Prophet Moses was able to part the Red Sea because he believed. Prophet Abraham was able to survive the fire of Nimrud because he believed. And Prophet Noah built the Ark of Salvation because he believed. That was in the past. More recently, Imam Khomeini brought the Islamic revolution because he believed in a better world. And in the future, we are going to see the greatest revolution of all time, the advent of Imam Zaman, the awaited savior of mankind, who will fill the earth with peace and justice. Now it's your turn to believe. People have even lost faith in the fact that world peace is achievable. People just don't believe that a world without war, without famine, without poverty can exist. But we know it can. Allah has promised to those of you who believe and do good that he will most certainly make them rulers in the earth as he made rulers those before them. So if we truly believe in God and the final day, and we believe that God has appointed a rightful leader on the globe, then we should strive our utmost to make that dream a reality. Next fortnight, we're going to be talking about something here that is going to tickle your fancy quite a bit. We'll see you there.